Yeah, it looks a little cool outside. Yeah, that thermometer says about 20 to 25 below. I wonder if I can get that trailer warmed up today. I'm going to go out and check and see what it's like out there. Ooh, that's cold. Number one rule when it's this cold, don't stick your tongue on anything. Well, that's stiff. This electric starter was so cold that I had to take it in the house and warm it up. The batteries in it wouldn't work. There's always matches. Oh yeah. At these temperatures, I'm just hoping these batteries continue working. Uh, alkaline batteries stop at about zero and lithium batteries will continue on down to about negative 20 or so, but it's cold in here. I didn't actually bring you out here to talk about warming this trailer up. I did that in a video a couple of years ago, three years ago called cargo trailer at minus 15 degrees <laughs> and I came out here in the trailer and and see, just to see if I could get this little stove to warm it up to you know 65 or 70 and it did after a while I brought you out here to talk to you about not dying when you're trying to warm your trailer up or your RV up uh, and it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be 25 below it can only be it can be 20 above 30 above any time where you go over and hit that thermostat and turn on the heat or light your heater or plug in your heater and it doesn't have to be propane heat it doesn't have to be diesel heat it can even be electric heat let's talk about that I'm cheating here today. I'm wearing my heated coat and heated socks. Boy, the technology has sure come a long way on these things. They don't have wires going back and forth through them anymore. They got these nice carbon fiber heating pads and they don't use proprietary, well, this coat doesn't use proprietary battery packs. It just uses the standard power banks that you use to charge your phone. So you can have a pocket full of those and stay warm all day. Anyways, this was a gift and I, I am appreciating it. <laughs> yeah, but on a serious note, uh, this time of year, earlier actually, when the temperatures first start to drop, people start dying from carbon monoxide and they distrust their equipment. It's like a person might say, well, I just bought my trailer a year ago. I only used it for two weeks. It's, it's all brand new. What could possibly be wrong with it? You're our, I just bought this generator. I paid $4,000 for it. They wouldn't sell me something that was dangerous, but that's what happens to people. There was two young rodeo riders that were sleeping in their uh, camper and on the, it was one of those long horse trailers with a camper on the, on the front and they had a generator set up in the back and the carbon monoxide from the generator came through the wall and, and they both died. That was sad. There was another one like that too. It was a single person. Same thing. And then there was um, a family in a motorhome that was using the motorhome generator, the, the one that's permanently installed. And the uh, fumes from that generator uh, killed them. It was a broken exhaust line or a crack in the exhaust line. Another family in a trailer had a generator that was set up uh, not under the trailer but off to one side and the fumes from that generator came up through the floorboards and the whole family died uh, this stuff happens too frequently and it's just something that we all need to think about and it doesn't have to be a generator all those three cases gener i think generators generators are number one for one thing but it could also be the uh 
something as small as the pilot light on your propane refrigerator can do it. This little stove that Linda and I love so much, this could kill us in a heartbeat. This is a ventilated propane stove. It has a chimney on it, so there's no propane fumes, although propane doesn't put out much in the way of fumes as long as the uh, burner is going correctly. That's why you can use propane in your home. Uh, they got propane ovens and propane cook stoves that people use and, and even your natural gas stoves in your home. You have that open flame. As long as it's burning correctly, it's, it's, it's safe. But the thing about this is there's a three inch column of air right now with this, with this heater on and it's rushing up the flue. Where's that air coming from? If I had the windows shut tight, if this had no way to get air, that air would be trying to get out and it wouldn't have anything to draw from. So it would start trying to suck air from outside from the chimney and it would be putting gases back into the trailer and those that would be unburned propane gases, propane fumes, and that's deadly. So we would die from carbon monoxide poisoning. In this little trailer, there has to be a vent. This one up here above the stove is always open. That's a three inch vent. So that by itself feeds the stove okay. But what would happen if a bird had built a nest outside there in that vent on the outside of it, in the little box on the outside, this stove would start choking and we would start dying. Because of that, we always have a window cracked. Always, always. I don't care if it is 20 degrees below zero outside. This window is cracked and that little stove up there cranks out enough heat that it'll heat this place up even if that is cracked. It could be a little, clo a little more closed here, but we always keep that open. But it actually doesn't matter if the stove is on or not. We don't sleep in this trailer with the windows closed. You'd suffocate. This is a six by 10 trailer. Windows have to be open. That's the key to all of these problems is lack of ventilation. People go to sleep with their generators running and uh, or their propane furnaces on and they don't have they don't have any cross ventilation. There's no windows open. You have to have a window open. It's actually recommended you have a window open and your overhead vent crack too a little bit. I don't like to do that because all the heat just goes right up through it. But have a pair of windows open, one on each side, just a little bit. The thing with the generators is damage of, uh, on a lot of them, a broken, a cracked exhaust line. You know that vibration all the time? You should have your generator inspected and your, you know, your permanently installed generators, your onboard ones. They should be inspected every year. Make sure that exhaust hasn't rusted and cracked or just work hardened and cracked from, from vibration. That's, a, that's one of the leading causes. And it, it does, the generator doesn't have to be that old either. It can also be that you've damaged it by going over some place where you didn't have enough clearance and you damaged the um, exhaust pipe underneath and pinched it shut. That'll do it too. In the case of portable generators, they recommend that the industry recommends that that generator is 20 feet away from your RV. Why? Because if you have it sitting outside next to your RV and you get a slight air movement and you've got it running at night and you're sleeping, but there's a slight air movement that's pushing that exhaust gas under your RV, that comes up through the floorboards and you die. You also want to make sure that the floorboards uh, in your RV, all the holes, all the cracks, all the drains, everything are sealed with a good sealant to prevent any fumes from coming up inside. And you know the Chinese diesel heaters that everybody, that's so popular right now? I mean, my daughter's getting ready to install one on her little six by 10 trailer, but it's the same thing. One of, those, one of the things that makes those so easy to install is you can just drill a hole in the floor and the air intake <coughs> for the burn chamber and the exhaust go right out through the floor of the trailer. Well, now you've got an ex exhaust coming up through the floorboards of your trailer. You've got to make sure that your trailer is parked in such a way that the predominant wind takes that away and never sleep with it on. You probably shouldn't sleep with any of your heating systems on, you know? How about a propane installed propane furnace? What happens if the um, exhaust on that is damaged or plugged up? Same thing. 
What happens if the pilot light on your propane refrigerator, if a bird has built a nest inside that refrigerator compartment, so that just the gases from your pilot light are coming into your RV? Over a period of time, that can be deadly. It'll, carbon monoxide builds up in your system. I had a neighbor that um, his, uh, the man worked and the wife worked from the home, so she was home all day. And she was suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning from their water heater because it wasn't vented properly. Took her months to recuperate. I don't know if she ever recover, recovered fully. I remember he would hold on to her and take her for walks around the neighborhood because she could barely stand up. It was bad. Propane is okay as long as the flame is not yellow, as long as you got a nice blue flame. But if you get a yellow flame, that means that it's not, it's not getting enough oxygen. Some of these have an adjustment on them, like right down here, this one has an adjustment. And that's wide open because of the altitude that we live at. But it can also go yellow if there's not enough air inside here for that to draw from. Then that flame will go yellow. And then when it's yellow, it's deadly. Another thing that can get you in trouble with your generator exhaust is if you're parked on top of weeds and you've made it so that your air, the air underneath your trailer is kind of trapped and can't move freely. So it, it lets that uh, exhaust gas come up through the, through the floor of your RV. That's another thing you need to watch out for. You need free air movement and that generator should be parked well away from your RV and the onboard generator should be inspected regularly. You get people that die every year from charcoal inside their um, inside their RV from burning charcoal and that may sound totally outlandish to most of us but to some of us you remember those tabletop hibachis that uh, they used to sell back in the 1960s and 70s and 80s beautiful little hibachis and they were designed for tabletop cooking but those were those came from tropical climates uh, they were real popular in Hawaii where the windows are always open and even Linda's father used to cook on a tabletop hibachi when she was little. But that's Hawaii where everything is wide open all the time. But some people come from cultures where they, they think that it's safe and they burn them inside. And boy, those put out a lot of carbon monoxide. Of course, this trailer has a carbon monoxide detector in it. But guess what? It's not working right now. I'm not sleeping in this trailer tonight. I've got both windows cracked here. And that vent up there is working, but that detector up there is not working because the batteries are too cold. I should put, um, I put lithium batteries in it, but Linda and I don't plan on going camping right now. I wonder if she'd like to go camping right now. Rick is outside in the trailer doing something. I don't know what, but he's out there in these temperatures. Hope he's not thinking of going camping because I'm not. <laughs> if you were to be going camping in sub-zero weather, make sure you put lithium batteries in your carbon monoxide detector. Because like I was just saying, those batteries are alkaline and they're not working because they're too cold, the carbon monoxide detector right up there. A lot of people are new to RVing now. A lot of them are from warmer climates and they're traveling around the United States and they wind up in cold areas where they got to turn the heat on for the first time. I sure hope they're thinking about what they're doing. So my final word here, check your equipment. Make sure it's operating correctly. Make sure the exhaust is operating correctly. Make sure you put your portable generator out away from your RV. Make sure you've got plenty of airflow around and under your RV and there's nothing restricting it. Make sure the exhaust isn't damp on your onboard uh, generator isn't damaged either underneath or, or the fittings cracked, it, cracked inside. And most of all, ventilate ventilate, ventilate windows and, and the overhead vent if necessary. Make sure you've got ventilation and it's a good idea not to sleep with a heater on in your RV. Hey, I really hope you guys got something out of this. I hope I didn't bore you. I'm going to go inside now and uh, refresh my cup of coffee and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you around. Actually got it up to 18 degrees inside here. It's just balmy. <laughs>